Funky Dineva, girl, we all known that you have some, you know, some situations going on where you may pop a pill or sniff a line or whatever it is you do to make your life happy better. I am not here to judge you, boo. But before you get on camera, I'm going to need you to take care of that junkie itch. Okay, church folks, because I know some of you mother hunches going to come over here rallying and attacking and all that other good stuff that you church folks would do. I think church is stupid. All right. Now, for those of you guys who are emotional commenters who want to comment without even hearing me out, let me put your fears at ease. This is not an attack on anybody's religious beliefs, their relationship to, to whoever they pray to, or anything of the sort. Do you, boo? But this is one man's analysis of unchecked tradition and rituals in the black community that I think have somewhat left us stifled in 2019. And if continued to go unchecked, we will continue to be behind the eight ball in relation to many other cultures. Simply put, we steered the church in 2019 the way we did it in 1919. And that, I think, deserves some re-evaluation. Look, it's no secret, churches are in the business of selling hope, okay? You know what I'm saying? And they sell you just enough hope to get you through the next seven-day cycle to get you back there to sell you some more hope. You know what I'm saying? And for some people, that is okay. For me personally, it isn't, but that's a whole nother video. What I would want to see you. Do you know what type of church I want to see in 2019? I want to see less benediction. I want to see less choir. I want to see less pantomime. I want that sermon cut in half, and I want you to give me one half sermon and the other half while the pastor has the whole church's attention. I need Sushi Orman to come in and help these people get out of debt. church and the unchecked traditions and religion in the black community have conditioned us to undo suffering. You know what I'm saying? We have a black people, we have this Jesus will fix it mentality. And if you just hold on, you know, we're conditioned to suffering now because we've been promised so much on the other side. I'm saying, go to church all day long, but we can get something practical out of it. If not, <laughs> you know, it, 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 and it's funny, and I know some people are going to take offense to this, but for those of you guys who find it, you know, two or three hours of your time every Sunday, two hours, how long you go to church, I question what those same two hours be better utilized sitting in the library in financial literacy tips? Would those same two hours be better utilized with you going to a licensed therapist or you and your husband going to a real therapist to help y'all with child marital issues and not somebody who will tell you just pray about it? Do you look at it like I look at Greenleaf sometimes and when they were saying, oh, you know, the collection plate was loaded, we passed it, we got to get the donations up. You know, and it's just like, is somebody who has monetary gain in you being there honestly going to give you the full unadulterated advice in which that you need? That's number one. Number two, I don't give a damn what your pastor has been anointed in, what Jesus don't touch him with, and what he don't read. He is not qualified to fix every problem in your life. Church and, and these pastors and these religious idols within the church community, and I don't feel like we're getting our fair share out of it in return. Funky Dineva, uh, because I believe that he says the things that a lot of us won't say. In fact, it's a lot of things that he has said about the black church that I am going to agree with in his video. But then there are other things that I'm going to say, wait a minute, Clarence, wait a hell of a minute. You're going to have to, you know, pull back on this one because you're asking too much from black American people. You're asking us to change things that have been a part of our tradition that has been passed down to us from our ancestors for years. And you wrong about that. Some things you was absolutely right on. Oh, but I'm gonna give you the whole nigga on what you was wrong about. So Funky Dineva said that he wanted less benediction, less sermon, and less choir, right? Now, I understand when he's saying, okay, these variables about the church is what's keeping us under the line all the time. Okay, my life has not changed Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So I need my pastor to continue to give me hope that my life is going to change. Instead of giving us the tools that we need to take the action that we need to do to make our life change, right? I agree with that. However, there are not a lot of things that black Americans have as tradition that has passed down, that has been passed down to us 
from our ancestors, dating back all the way to our slavery days, right? And what I feel is that uh, Funky Daniva is actually shitting on tradition. We need that benediction. We need that choir. We need that sermon. No matter how long, boring, and dumb it may be that day, we need that because that is our tradition and I do not want it to change. I appreciate Funky Daniva for wanting to be forward thinking about the idea of teaching us. But let's move on to this. He said that we should actually cut the sermon in half and have Susie Orman come on down there and teach us financial stability. Funky, you know goddamn well no pastor is going to allow some rich white woman to come on down to the church, the black church, and tell the truth to black Americans, which is you need to stop giving 10% of your money to the church. You need to put 10% of your money into your savings. You know no black pastor is fitting to do that. And I think you're reaching on that. But he's forward thinking in the way of, come on now, we got to do better. You know, stop living in the past. Because when he said we do church the same way we did in 1919 as 2019. It's true. But the reason why we do it is because of tradition. You know, I, I can't lie. I'm a, I, my father is an apostolic pastor. Um, I have a, that is the faith that I claim, even though I'm a lesbian woman. You know, I mean, I know y'all like, how the hell are you hunting on women and you apostolic child? I don't know. Would any pastor allow some woman to come in, any man, whoever, a book or anything, to teach these people to not give him more money? You're doing too much. You're asking too much. Now, although it may sound right, it's not tradition. Let me tell you this, because I am the daughter of an apostolic minister, too. I keep telling y'all, if y'all see a man that look like me, about 6'1", very handsome, you know, my dad like old as hell, but he still looks very, very handsome. Child, you better run from that dad. Yeah. My pappy ain't to be messed with, because he's older, but he's very smooth with the ladies. Like all... Ministers are. They're very smooth with the ladies. And to me, you know, what the black church has done is turned into something else, you know. And I'm going to get my interpretation on it. And you can tell me how you, you know, feel. Some of you are going to be like, now you're going to compare the church to the strip club? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. The same way that men go to see the strippers and give them their money and tip them and everything off of a fantasy. Because one day these men believe that they may get the opportunity to lay down with some of these, you know, ladies. It's the same way that some of these women believe in their heart that they may get the opportunity to be the first lady. Oh, yes. Some of these bitches really believe that they're going to be their ministers or their pastor's first lady. They believe that. Child. Even when it's a whole first lady right there standing right next to him and oh God, uh, Oscar De La Rente dress and some Louboutin. This is how I look at things now as an adult. Right, I am no longer looking at pastors, bishops, uh, what else do y'all call them, ministers, reverence, uh, you know, the man that's up there on the pulpit that's dressed 10 times better than me, you know, drive a car 20 times better than mine, you know, life, his kid's car is 20 times better than mine, blah, blah, blah. I no longer look at them as the person that God put on earth that will lead me to the pearly gates. I don't look at them as that. They are not my Lord and Savior. They're not disciples. They're not Christians. They're not none of that to me, right? Or they're anointed. Whatever it is that y'all want to call those people that you look to every Sunday to give you what you need in order to come back the next time. I look at him as my teacher. And just like I had to um, pay my professors when I was in college in order to teach me what I needed to be a better person. That's what I look at it as, as the person, the bishop or, you know, whoever, Tommy, Clarence, whoever it is up there on the pulpit with, you know, red bottoms on and a Gucci belt. I look at him as the person who is teaching me how to maneuver in the Although world. Although people have discrepancies about the Bible, it is a teacher, you know, just like old textbook, in school, it teaches you how to maneuver in the universe where when you're in school, it teaches you how to do math problems. It teaches you how to problem solve. It teaches you a lot of things when you're in college, you know, you know, social skills, all kinds of things. I also look at it as this. If I can go to a play, to a movie, 
um, a show, a concert, anything like that, and be entertained for however long, whether it's an hour, hour and a half, two hours, and I can pay my ticket to be entertained, just like if I want to go down there and see MC Hammer, if I pay $50 down there to the Capitol Center to see Heavy D, MC Hammer, whoever, Luther Vandross, who would I see down, New Edition, BBD, whoever the case, then I need to do the same for the man that's entertaining me for Sunday, that's giving me hope, no matter how false it may be. But he is what I need in order to survive in this world. Why? Because it is tradition and it has been passed down to us from my grandmother, my great grandmother, even all the way up to my grandmothers that were enslaved. I believe that the church needs to give back more to the community. Hell yeah. Do I believe that the church is also some, uh, you know, some few gaugey shit? Hell yeah. But if you understand exactly what the church is doing and understand it as a tradition that has been passed down through our families and we have to accept the fact that our pastors are human now and they no longer are you know the perfection that you know is supposed to stand next to God and what they are here to do is to teach us how to maneuver in this world through the Bible then you'll be fine so I really don't care about you know the tithing part because I don't belong to a church right now I really don't but if I belong to the church and I have I don't mind tithing because I'm paying this man. If I walk away with something better or more than what I had when I came in that church, then he deserves that $20, $30, $40. Now, I don't know if I'm going to give him 10% of my check. I don't know that. You know, because if I'm making $100,000, do I want to give this man $10,000 of my money? Hell no. I'm not going to give that man $10,000 because I don't know him. Don't pay the man what he deserves. And if I or the woman, you know, that's like, you know, but most times it's a man because the church is full of women. Child, women looking for love. Child, you know, Funky Dineva, I think he tried it. I think he's forward thinking on how he wants to, you know, see black folks prosper. He wants us to move past ignorance. So anyway, guys, if you have not already liked this video, please thumbs up and share because it is so important to my success here on YouTube. Now, remember this, the same people you meet on the way up will always be the same people you meet on the way down, naysayers. My patron loves. Have a good one. Deuce.